was a time in history, long, long ago, when Electronic Arts would often publish games under the Sims franchise brand that were not The Sims and SimCity. Among the last of these games, actually the last to be available on PC, was Sim Golf. And like many of the Sims franchise games, it wasn't made by Maxis. If you remember from the Sim Tower show as well, that wasn't made by Maxis either. And yet they're all part of the same franchise with one driving idea behind every game. That of simulating something in depth. Or in depth enough so that you get a system that is rewarding as you learn it. There's layers to it. There are systems interacting with systems and other systems creating, I wouldn't say endless possibility, but a a whole lot more than you think at first. And Sim Golf was such a game. Or, uh, if you want to use its full name, Sid Meier Sim Golf because it was made by Firaxis that were just done with Civilization 3. This is, or was, one of the few non turn based games that the company ever made. It's made a couple of them since then, but this was unique back then. It was rare. And it was not a war game. It was not a grand strategy. It was a game about golf. Firaxis wasn't really a bad choice for developing this game because well, Sid Meier was there and it's not like he didn't have the experience or the people there didn't have the experience with making simulator type games, a bunch of them having made pirates back in the day which was in itself a simulator in its own way. Only this was not uh, what you would call a sports game. Yeah, you could play golf. Absolutely, you could play golf. Spent about five weeks, I guess, in the demo alone. But it was not in-depth. This wasn't Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2002. I think that actually was a game. It was a simplified version of the act of playing golf, where you would choose where to get the ball, how, and then you relied on your character's skill to actually do the deed. And that skill would level up by you playing and actually making good shots that would encourage your character to uplift his skill or by investing skill points directly when you reach certain milestones. What milestones? Well, there are things like opening the ninth hole in your very own golf course. Because at its core, that's what it was. It was a game where you would have your own golf course, that you would manage, that you would design, that you would painstakingly attempt to transform into the greatest golf course in the world. I was going for Trump but somehow it came out Clarkson. Regardless, you would place down buildings like uh, putting greens to help golfers improve their skill, you would build shops that would sell food to people. You didn't have restaurants, I think, though. You had theme parks, or at least water parks, you would have spas, you had hotels, and you would have to hire people to make sure that things were going well. You had to hire people that would sell refreshment drinks from hole to hole or person to person. You had to hire weed whackers. You had to hire people to yell at the golfers to get on with it and also people to greet them. There wasn't such a thing as the need for security, but since it was golf, people would get angry and they didn't have to boot them out because they would depress everybody else around. Them. There were three systems at play in this game. There was the golfing itself, there was the setting up the park with its economy and the way that the holes worked, and then there were the sims themselves. And these three interacted. And when I say the sims, I mean the golfers who behave close Closer to what you would see in the Sims game instead of just being some NPCs that play golf. They had certain characteristics to them. They were outgoing or not. They were imaginative or not. They were friendly or less friendly, easily irritable. They had certain preferences that you had to cater to. So you couldn't just build any kind of park and then hope that the right Sims would come to you and they would have fun and the rest would not. Now you had to try to cater to everybody and not really exclude people. And these sims would talk among themselves using simlish, speaking words that are forever ingrained in my mind because I spent a lot of time just playing the demo of the game, listening to them yell Machiono! Mm -hmm. And all so many other things. And they would even form relationships among themselves. And the thing was that depending on how much they liked your park, 
their relationship would evolve. It was something really simplistic. The idea was that if you didn't get them mad by having really difficult or really easy challenges, they would socialize and a couple of hearts would show up and their conversation would progress and at the end you would get a reward in the form of a landmark building that does not let dandelion show up or keeps other people happy. But if they were happy, more of them would come, uh, some of them would become members, gold members even, I think there was also platinum maybe, I'm not sure. Some of them would buy houses on your lot, you decided where to put the house and if you put it in a really attractive place you'd get a lot of money for it and celebrities would live in that house sometime. And hey, when there's a celebrity around, people will be a lot more interested in coming by. And you would expand your terrain, your, your park by first making sure that the person that's in charge of selling the land will say, oh, you've got a nice golf course, I'd like to see it go bigger and not, dear god, dear god, I hope you die. Well, they didn't say that, but well, technically they could say that because at least there were some um, customization options in terms of what your sim and other sims could say. For example, in the, pretty much half of the video on the background, I inserted playful jabs at YouTube sucking, which is always something fun to do. And it's important to note that it wasn't really a simple process to get the holes in the best possible shape so that everybody could enjoy them. It was just a matter of, oh, you place a T, you place a green with a flag on it. Yeah, that's the thing. Everybody enjoys it. No, no, no. You have to fine tune them. You have to use data analysis. You've got a little button that shows you, like, um, depending on each type of skill that a character has, what would they aim for? What could they hit? What could they do? And you have to get creative with the way you place your holes, uh, whether you use elevation, whether you use traps around them. If you put them near water, if you put them near trees, you have to fine tune them so that there is a challenge there. There is a perceived challenge there. The sim goes, oh my god, this could be horrible if I miss. I'll wind up in the water and have to fight an alligator for my balls. There are gators in, in the game, but they don't attack people. And snakes too. They don't kill people either. You can scare them though. And when they succeed, they'll feel happy, better. But if they fail so much that a single hole takes like 10 strikes or whatever you call them, they will be quite angry and you will have to redesign that challenge until it's better suited. Also, it's useful if you place different kind of scenery around it so that there's a journey there involved so that people will at least see something beautiful while they're getting really angry and possibly thinking of shoving a golf club somewhere very painful. And that was the joy of the game, fine-tuning. Well, that was half the joy of the game, fine-tuning the holes and then participating in tournaments. You could also have practice sessions and different challenges issued by different pros where you would get money if you beat them at each individual hole and then at the end maybe even more money but with the tournaments you, you had that, that was the big leagues you'd have television cameras you would have actual recommendations from the sims golfing uh, what you might call it uh, organization of how you can improve your 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 holes by making them par four instead of par five or par three instead of par two or making the grass rougher or coarser or shorter or longer you could ignore the, uh, their uh, recommendations, but usually you agreed and you'd be playing golf or, depending on how big you set the course to be, possibly hours. The game is more than some of its parts. Individually, the golf component is meh. It's not a deep enough management simulator or an economical simulator to sort of scratch the itch of someone that enjoys things like uh, Roller coaster tycoon because you can't set any prices here. Well, prices do go up if your if your holes get declared some of the best in the world. Without context, this video is gonna get flagged so hard. Like the holes, you flag the holes so that you know where to put the thing in the balls. I mean, and the component with the Sims as well is about as superficial as can be. But you put them all together and you still get a product that makes every Facebook, every social, every mobile game made, well, most mobile games made, but every Facebook game made oh for sure, look like absolute shit, like turd sandwiches. 
Holy hell, people. This was made in 2002. It can run on a tablet. It can run on a phone. It can run on a browser, for God's sake. And yet, it's more addictive, more enjoyable, more fulfilling than any shitty ass Farmville clone that's been made and remade a bajillion times since the advent of the shit that was social and Facebook and mobile gaming. Instead of getting stuff like this, we got crap. And no, I'm never gonna let this go. Millions of people have been indoctrinating into thinking that those are games, that that, that other feces is gaming. Instead, of, we could have had sim golf on tablets and on Facebook. It's a simplistic game that everybody can enjoy and it is fantastic. But we don't get nice things, do we? We sure don't. Well, we got this one. Um, you can't buy it anywhere right now. You either have to dig up the old demo or yar har har it off the interwebs. It'll run well enough on Windows 10 as long as you don't have more than one monitor enabled. And one last thing to add about it is the sound design. Apart from the simlish rantings of The Sims, you had the perfect, and I mean perfect, sounds for when you built T's and holes. It sounded like... Like one of those Windows 98 jingles for when you would uh, get a pop-up message. There's something so nostalgic about them. It, it just... It takes me back to my childhood. Okay, no it doesn't. It takes me back somewhere further than my childhood because I didn't have a computer back then. It takes me back to a simpler time when I could play sim golf for five weeks straight because I didn't have any other games and this was just a demo and no one yet had made Farmville to darken the world with other crap. So if you see sim golf, give it a shot. It would be the perfect game to play on the toilet but you know it uh, it's not on mobile devices. You can probably get it to work on a laptop. I'm sure you could. But other than that it's as forgotten as the majority of the other sim games in the sim franchise that aren't the sims or sim city and it'll still be enjoyable today goodbye